R.3 polynomials. What we'll be going over in this particular video is uh, multiplication specifically. Some of you did have some extra questions on uh, how to go over that procedure uh, in more detail. That's because I went through it really quickly. Uh, the actual textbook lecture notes, which that's what this is, by the way, the ones I put together are like a shorter version of these notes. This one uh, contains quite a bit more problems for multiplication. So I skipped through all of those. And the reason being is because of the synchronous versus asynchronous schedule that we have. I'm having to shorten things up, make things a bit more shallow, not as deep as before. And I'm having to compensate for not going as deep as I'd like during the asynchronous days with videos like these. So this will be the first of many uh, supplemental videos uh, to cover topics that we might not have gotten enough of during the synchronous lecture because there's a lot less time right now for me to go over direct teaching. So these videos will be available with the assignments that correspond to them. So for now, we're just concentrating on the skill of multiplication. The next video will be over just division because those are the two that I consider most important. And those are probably the most complicated of the steps that we or the skills that we looked over in this particular section. So on to multiplication. Just quite a bit into it. And it starts here. So this particular example we did in class. So if you want to see how that one was done, go back to our point three material uh, a little further up in the Google Classroom. You should find the video there where I explained it. So we will move on to more examples for multiplication. So here are some other ones. They have quite a bit of them. So this is example seven in the textbook. So find each product. So these are slightly more, <clears throat> uh, these are sli uh, slightly simpler. So seven Y plus three, four Y minus five is the product that we want to find. A traditional algebra one or algebra two teacher would have you draw arrows so that way you know which ones to pair up. So we have 7y times 4y, which is going to give you a result. Then you take that same 7y, then you multiply it into negative 5. It's going to give you another result, so two different products so far. Then you take the 3, multiply it with the 4y, which will give you a third product. And then you take the same 3, multiply it with the negative 5 for a total of four products. You'll know how many products you have to make or how many, how many multiplications you have to carry out by multiplying the number of terms with the number of terms here. So 7y plus 3, that's two terms. 4y minus 5 is another two terms. This is a two by two situation. There's supposed to be four total products. Now to keep track of what those products should be, instead of using the arrows, I prefer the box method. Like I said in class, it's a little elementary. I kind of don't care. It's a good method and it works. It's visual, so it helps others see it a little bit better. Uh, some of us uh, don't need this extra visual. But some of us, we, we would prefer it. So 7y plus 3, that doesn't matter which one you put where because they're both 2 and 2. So it's a 2 by 2, doesn't matter where you put them. As long as you put one on one side and the other on the other side. So 7y, positive 3, 4y, negative 5. And like we did in class, within each of those boxes, you multiply the corresponding sides. So for the top left box, 4y and 7y have to get multiplied. So you're multiplying 7y and 4y. And to slow this down a little bit, 4y times 7y is the same as if I took 7 times 4 and multiplied y and y. 7 times 4, that's just arithmetic. 7 times 4 would be, what, 28? y times y, now that's algebra. y to the first power, y to the first power, same base. And then we have powers for those. So as long as they have the same base, you can add the powers. y1, y1 would be y squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you add those powers and there's the procedure. So that's 28 Y squared. And then we repeat this for all of those boxes. So three more times. So you can go in whatever order you want. Doesn't matter. It's graphical. Uh, this has to do with the commutative property and the associative property. Doesn't matter what order you do this in. So I'm going to go from left to right and then top down. So 4y times 3 is what we're multiplying. So 3 times 4y, there's only numbers that uh, can be combined. 4 times 3 would be 12, and then there's a y. So then for the next one, 7y and negative 5. So you multiply negative 5 and 7, you get negative 35, and that's going to end up resulting in negative 35y. And then negative 5 times 3, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. 
So there's all four of those terms. And for those of us that might have gotten a little confused with the, because I didn't show all of the uh, steps by hand that uh, combine like terms, some of us already see, all you do is combine the middle term. So these two are the only ones that can be combined. So you look at the, you look to see if there's any like terms. Those are the only two that are like each other, and you're going to combine those. But if I were to slow this down just a little bit more, you can write all four of those things down. 28y squared plus 12y minus 35y and then minus 15. Which I might need to move that. And you see that these are the only two that can combine. Then 28y squared stays the way it is. 12 minus 35. It's going to be a negative 23y, I believe. If you take 23 and you add 12, you get 35. So then minus 15. Nothing else can combine. This is your answer. So that's it for example 7, part A. So there's going to be several more of these. And I will go over more. So look at letter B. Same idea. So this is a two by two, and you'll notice they actually agree in the terms, except for one of them uh, differs by a sign. So corresponding parts, there's one that differs by a sign. This is actually going to result in a uh, very common uh, special binomial. So this is the sum and the difference of the same two terms. So one of them is being added, and the other one, they're being subtracted. Same order of appearance, that's going to give us a special binomial. So again, I'll do a box. Six P positive 11, six P negative 11. Doesn't matter where you put the negative one. So then six P times six P, that one's going to be 36 P squared. Make sure you check that one. Six P times 11, 66 P. Six P times negative 11, negative 66 P. Negative 11 times 11, negative 121. So that's what we get uh, with the resulting box values. If you did this right and there's no missing terms, there's a P term and then a constant term, another P term and a constant term, nothing missing, then the diagonals, shortcut, diagonals will uh, combine. Now, if you check what's in that diagonal, negative 66P, positive 66P, those are the exact same value, different signs, they completely cancel each other out, and the middle term disappears. And all you're left with are the outer terms. So this equals to 36p squared minus 121. And that's actually the answer, but there's a bit more to say about it, because there's something special about that. 36p squared is the result of taking the same 6p and multiplying it with itself. The second term, negative 121, negative 121 is the result of multiplying these two, negative 11 and positive 11. Because they had the same value for both terms but different signs, the middle term cancels out. And there's a bit of a shortcut, a uh, bit of a shortcut here. So if you notice that you have the same two terms and they're only varying the sign between them, you're going to end up with this two-term binomial or this two-term polynomial, also known as a binomial. And the end result will be the sum of the square, or not the sum, the difference of the squares of those two terms. And there's a name for it, which I just basically stated. It's the difference of squares binomial. So you get a difference of squares. So in the name, it gives you the instructions on how to carry out the shortcut. All you do is subtract the squares of those two terms. And there's a generalization. A plus B multiplying A minus B will result in A squared minus B squared as a shortcut. So that's the difference of squares formula. We'll look at letter C. So for letter C, X cubed times 2X minus 5 times 2X plus 5. So here we have three factors in a product that we have to carry out. 
So whenever we have three factors in a product, we do two at a time. So we'll do two first and then multiply the third one in later. I don't want to multiply them in the order that I see them from left to right. There's a shortcut. I can either multiply these two together and then multiply this one afterwards, but then I'm not going to be able to util utilize the shortcut that we saw in part B. And you might be wondering what shortcut am I referring to? Look at these two. With those, we can apply the difference of squares formula to it. So that's 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. It's the sum and the difference of the same two things. 2x and 5, 2x and 5. So the same thing's going to happen like this happened in the box, where those two diagonal terms cancel each other out. All that's going to remain, all that's going to survive, are the squares of those two terms that we started out with. So what we do is we take the x cubed. Now I'm going to just drop that one down. I'm going to pay attention to that one later. And we can apply that shortcut, 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 5. What you do is you square 2x. 2x times 2x would give you 4x squared. And then you're going to subtract, because that's what the formula says. It's a difference of squares. You'll subtract the square of the second. So 5 times 5, 25. And that's a shortcut for carrying this type of procedure out. So if you ever see that, you can apply that shortcut if you remember it. It's a good shortcut to know, and it's one that you're going to be utilizing a lot in calculus later on. In fact, most calculus professors, I don't know if that's the case for Mr. Nelson here at Memorial High School. I'm assuming he's a very, very nice teacher. He's not like the, the jerks you're going to end up getting later on in college. In college, a lot of the times they're very uh, conceited, uh, very full of themselves types of people. And uh, they expect a lot out of you. They expect a lot out of the teachers that uh, that taught you guys. And of course, we do we do fail quite a bit to get you all prepared uh, for various reasons. But uh, one of the things that they're going to judge you by is if you know your shortcuts very, very well. This is one of those things. And it speeds up a lot of the uh, processes in calculus. So a lot of the times, if you don't remember these things when you get to calculus, you might meet with a teacher or an instructor that's uh, going to hold that against you and get annoyed. So these are things you do want to put into practice. That's the reason why we're reviewing all this stuff again, because it shows up later. Okay, so x cubed, 4x squared minus 25. So then all I have to do at this point is I'm multiplying a 1 with a 2. And by 1, I mean it's a single term. This one's two terms. Those are very easy. So for this one, I don't even need the box. I can drop the box and just go ahead and distribute those straight. So it's really just distributive property at this point. And all we're doing is we're taking the x terms and we're combining them. x cubed times x squared, you add the exponents, that's x to the fifth. So x, so 4x to the fifth, that is. And then minus 25 x cubed, which will be our final answer for this one. And that should basically be it for multiplication. Anything else just takes practice. So utilize the box wherever you can. Utilize this shortcut wherever you can. And that should be it for today.